Dr. Kim is a researcher working on a project to create a warhead for North and South Korean joint forces. In the opening scene, she watches news on television that talks about a massive comet passing dangerously close to Earth. It returns to the Earth every 433 years, but this time, it will be visible because of the distance. In the meantime, the military leaders of North and South Korea are discussing their plan to surrender a nuclear warhead. It was being built in a secret bunker with the joint efforts of both countries under Dr. Kim. However, after constantly being pressured by other world leaders, they have to reluctantly give up the warhead, which will be transported to another country in the morning. The initiative is supposed to bring peace to the nations, but a North Korean major named Kang is displeased with the consolation. Hence, he, along with North Korean soldiers, kidnaps Dr. Kim, who has a keycard to the unit where the nuke is kept. By midnight, the nuke is stolen and brought to the waters. Even Dr. Kim ends up being kidnapped amidst the chaos. Soon, the South Korean soldiers find out about the intrusion. A platoon under the leadership of Major Park is dispatched to catch Kang and his team of soldiers. In the following scene, both parties meet each other in the middle of the Han River. A loud bang is heard that initiates a gunfight between them. However, However, they fail to realize that the noise came from a massive comet passing dangerously close to the Earth. The phenomenon causes the boat to disappear. The screen goes black, and when Dr. Kim opens her eyes, she finds herself in a field. Several men in traditional clothing are running about and fighting. It turns out that the comet caused a time rift in the atmosphere, sending three North and three South Korean soldiers into the year 1572 alongside Dr. Kim, who never wanted to be a part of this. Currently, the war between Joseon-era Koreans and Jurchen invaders is going on. The soldiers think it is a joke until someone tries to attack them. In retaliation, they kill the Jurchen soldiers with an explosive, angering their commander. The commander tries to attack them, but stops when a gunshot hurts his ear. After the invaders leave, the poor Korean villagers surround the soldiers and treat them as messiahs. They are given the nickname Heavenly Soldiers due to their abilities that seem magical to the villagers. Because the situation is foreign to the soldiers, they stay in a cave for the night. Park points his gun at Kang, blaming him for everything. When the conversation gets heated, Dr. Kim calms both parties, ordering them to put the conflict aside until they figure out how to get back to the future. More importantly, she is worried about the missing nuke that is a hundred times more intense than the atomic bombs used in World War II. It seems to have been lost when they entered the time rift. Since Kang is responsible for its disappearance, he promises to find the nuke one way or the other. Somewhere else, the Jurchen leader is busy shaming the commander who ran away from the battlefield earlier. Even though the commander argues that the soldiers were extraordinary, the leader doesn't excuse his cowardice. He hands the commander a crossbow and gives him one last opportunity to kill all of Heaven's soldiers. Back in the cave, a commoner spies on the soldiers and tries to steal from them when they are asleep. However, the guy is an idiot and decides to help the soldiers sleep comfortably instead of running away with the stolen items. He is eventually caught, but the commotion attracts the attention of the village's guards. As a result, the thief and two soldiers are taken to the king for display of violence. Kang and Park dress up as commoners and watch the hearing from the sidelines. The thief's name is announced to be Yi Sun Sin from a place called Asan. The name sounds familiar to Park, and upon embarking on it, he realizes the thief is the legendary Korean warrior who will later become instrumental in the defeat of the Japanese invasion. Yi is considered a nation's hero and the greatest Korean warrior in modern days. But seeing him in real time, the major is in disbelief because he is nothing like how the modern Korean histories illustrate him. The king orders to behead Yi and both soldiers for stealing an explosive that he thinks is a metal ball. At night, the three of them are locked in prison until a soldier comes to their rescue. Apart from helping the soldiers, he also forces Yi to come with them. It turns out that Yi stole weapons from the cave earlier, and the soldiers want them back. Yi argues he threw them into the river, but no one believes him. Park tells everyone that Yi is no other than the great warrior they read about in history classes. The information leaves everyone in shock as they turn to look at the idiotic thief who doesn't possess a single quality of a warrior. Yi manages to run away when the others are distracted. However, when he wakes up the next morning, the soldiers are in his front yard, making themselves at home. They bow down, addressing him as the general and asking for forgiveness. Yi believes they are trying to trick him, but cannot protest against all six of them.
Starting the next day, Park takes it upon himself to train Yi and make him the general he is destined to become. Yi is confused at first, but eventually comes to terms with the harsh training. Meanwhile, Kang and the North Korean soldiers continue looking for the nuke, which they think has time traveled with them. They make maps and search every part of the village, but are unable to find it. One morning, when no one is around, Yi goes to the woods with the weapons he had stolen from the soldiers. He believes they are worth a lot of money and wants to sell them in the future. He buries them near a tree, and a little peasant girl sees him doing so. She is curious about the guns, but Yi manages to send her away after bribing her with a bar of chocolate. However, a few hours later, she walks out of the woods with a gun in her hands. The Jurchen spies sent to find the soldiers notice the girl. They register that the soldiers must be nearby because of the gun. In the meantime, Park and the others treat Yi with respect and take great care of him. Dr. Kim thinks they should not try to interfere with Yi's life because it might change the future of the entire nation, but Park believes Yi needs them to become a warrior. One afternoon, Dr. Kim excitedly gathers everyone and reveals that she has discovered something about the comet. The last time it traveled close to Earth was 433 years ago, which is why they were transferred to 1572. It's exactly 433 years earlier than their time. If they follow the pattern according to the moon's calendar, the next comet will pass in four days, which means they can return home. The only problem is that she doesn't know what part of the village they should be in when the comet passes, but she is positive she will find a solution to that. At night, Park sees his soldiers digging through Yi's belongings. They find many plant roots and figure out Yi is actually a lowly smuggler. They burn all of it, asking Yi to get his act together and do what he is supposed to do for the nation. Angered by them treating him like a kid, Yi storms away. A while later, a South Korean soldier finds him and pretends to read his palm, telling him everything he will achieve in the future. Yi laughs at the guy, refusing to believe him. When the soldier tries to tell him the entire truth, an arrow lands in his neck and kills him. Yi is then surrounded by the Jurchen invaders and abducted. They hold him hostage, showering him with whips to torture him. The commander wants to know where the rest of the soldiers are. If Yi tells them, he gets to be killed peacefully, but if not, he might suffer a lifetime's worth of torture. Even when he is shown the decapitated head of the soldier, he refuses to tell them anything. But then, the commander brings the peasant girl who had the gun. To save the little girl's life, Yi promises to show them the soldier's residence in the morning. The commander lets the girl go free, but then hits her with an arrow before she can run away. He threatens to do the same to Yi if he doesn't hold up his end of the deal. That sounds better than a lifetime's worth of torture. At night, when everyone is asleep, Kang and his coordinates come to Yi's rescue. They also discover the nuclear warhead was inside a tent all along and are finally able to retrieve it. Amidst the mission, they enter a room where the heir of the Jurchen is resting. He has the gun that was stolen from the girl, which he tries using on Kang. However, Kang, with his amazing reflexes, manages to kill the guy and run away with Yi. The next morning, the Jurchen leader finds his son's dead body and is stricken with grief. With a renewed sense of revenge, both the leader and commander make it their mission to kill the escapee. Somewhere else, Yi is shaken by the unjust death of the child. He repeatedly hears his father and the soldiers, telling him to pass the military test and become a general. Until now, he believed he was a loser who couldn't achieve anything great in life. But after witnessing the girl's death, he gets a reason to fight. Meanwhile, with the nuke in their possession, Dr. Kim notices the timer on it has moved from 10 to 5 minutes. This means they have been here for 5 days, because 1 minute of real time is equal to 1 day of time in the past. Using the nuke, the timing and location of the comet's passing are accurately calculated. Hence, the soldiers prepare to leave the past as it currently stands. In the following scene, they are holding a funeral for the dead member of their team. Just then, they are approached by the villagers, who have dug out the weapons from the woods. They want the soldiers' help to seek revenge for the girl who was killed. Apparently, she was an orphan who was liked by everyone in the village. Because she had no parents, the villagers all grieve her death as though she was their own daughter. Initially, Major Park is skeptical because he doesn't want to interfere with the past. However, he changes his mind when Kang comes forward and agrees to help. The villagers alongside the modern Koreans prepare for the battle. While planning a strategy for the attack, Kang and Park get into an argument that ends up in a fist fight. They only stop when Yi orders them to. He makes them realize that their rivalry is nothing compared to the villagers' safety. Park sees that Yi has finally gained his essence as a future general. 
For an entire day, Yi inspects the areas around the village and figures out which path their rivals are going to take. He even surprises everyone by planning a clever tactic of attack. After analyzing all the aspects of the battle, according to him, they can hide in the narrow part of the hill where the rivals will be coming from. That way, only 10 of them can pass through at a time and they can kill them easily. Still, there is a huge chance that all of them will die in the battle, since the villagers are going against the trained fighters of Jurchen. On the day before the arrival of the Jurchens, Dr. Kim notices that their clocks are moving faster. This means the comet is accelerating at a greater speed, and they will have to return home before the Jurchens invade. The soldiers have to choose between returning to their old life or helping the villagers. They decide to go with the former, because staying in the village might not help Yi in the long run. As they prepare to leave, Park suggests Yi also run away to save his life. He has to be alive for the future when the Japanese invade Korea, hence he cannot risk being killed in a less important battle. Enraged by the suggestion, Yi loses respect for Park. But in the end, he is knocked out and carried off for his own good. Everything goes according to plan until the North Koreans realize that they will be sentenced to death when they return to the future for stealing the nuclear warhead. At the last minute, Kang changes his mind and elects to go back to the village to help defend it from the Jurchens. The others follow his lead and decide to stay behind for their own reasons. They even hand their necklaces to Dr. Kim, asking her to return them to their families. A while later, the stubborn Yi manages to escape his confinement and joins the soldiers and the villagers in their battle. The invaders initiate the first attack, giving rise to a long and hard fight. The soldiers use the guns and explosives to kill the first batch of soldiers before they do any damage. But when the second batch arrives with crossbows, the villagers are pushed back and most of them are killed. The leader of the Jurchens kills many soldiers and weakens the team. Major Kang also dies after taking an arrow to save Yi's life. In the end, only Sergeant Choi and Park are left alive out of all of Heaven's soldiers. After an intense battle, the leader of the rivals is finally killed and the villagers become the victor. Somewhere else, Dr. Kim is also attacked by the Jurchens. A guard fights them to keep her safe. She is almost killed by a grenade, but the comet arrives right on time and creates the time rift yet again. She and the warhead make it back to the present and she reports their experiences to the Korean generals. The superiors don't believe the story of time travel, but now that they have the nuke, they do not care about the missing soldiers. At last, they decide to turn over the warhead and maintain peace in both nations. In the last scene, we see Dr. Kim visit a local memorial of Admiral Yi. She misses the soldiers and Yi and is sad that she doesn't know what happened to them. The scene then shifts to the time of the Battle of Myongyang Strait. There, we see that Yi has now become the general and is preparing to face the Japanese soldiers. In the battle, he and only 13 Korean ships successfully destroy an over 300 strong Japanese armada. Aboard his flagship, Yi is with none other than Park and Choi, who are now his staff officers. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.